Brethren Media, a ministry of international brethren. stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for this privilege God has given me to be here with all of you in this assembly hall. I am from Mavelikara Brethren Assembly. I am one of the commended evangelists from my assembly. Actually, I was born and brought up in an evangelical family. My father was from Roman Catholic background. My mother was from Marthoma background. And my father became a believer when he was in Bhopal in connection with his uh, job. Then when the Evangelical Church started, uh, they became the members of St. Thomas Evangelical Church in Kerala. So I was uh, brought up in such situation and God uh, helped me to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I went to Bharat Bible College. I think our dear our brother also is a graduate from uh, Bharat Bible College, Secondary Bar in India. So I had gone there 
to study the word of god to become a priest in the evangelical church so when i studied there i met so many of the brethren uh people from kerala and uh, through their influence and through their you know teaching uh, you know today i am here uh, with you in this assembly so later i joined maveligira assembly and uh, there are other evangelists in my assembly one um, brother wilson k thomas another uh, brother george chako uh, now he is in korathigad and another brother jacob thomas and my sister uh, set apart for the ministry and uh, she is serving the lord with her husband in orissa in gobalpur and now we have so many new uh, believers as a result of our ministry and many how set apart for the lord's ministry one brother gangadharan and another brother dharmaraj another brother sunish so they are working for the lord in different uh, parts of alappi district in kerala and another brother yesudas now he is serving the lord in chatisgarh as an evangelist in a remote place so please remember my assembly activities and the evangelist who are laboring for the lord in and around uh, maavelikira area i have my wife manna she is from trivandrum and god has blessed us with one uh, son we call him eben at home and philip his official name philip c johnson he is waiting for his 12th class result please remember my family in your prayers so apart from my assembly activities i associate with uh, brotheran bible institute patanandata that is one of the leading uh, bible training institutions in india i think bbi is the first institution uh, started to offer a degree course among the brethren in india and after that we have so many other uh, institutions like stewards bible college rahbot theological institute north india bible institute and uh, another uh, hope theological seminary so we have now so many other bible schools and colleges offering theological degrees so i am actively uh, involving in the ministry with the brotheran bible institute that is in ilandur patanamdita so we have so many students graduated from our college and they are serving the lord in different parts of india and as a result of their ministry so many assemblies have been established and now uh, the new year batch commenced uh, in the month of may and now we have 42 students in bbi so please remember this ministry in your prayer and uh, this is the ministry run by the brethren who are from kerala and who are settled in or working in gulf and america we don't have any other foreign iaid or any foreign agency regularly supporting for the ministry of brotheran bible institute only the brotheran believers who have gone from kerala and working in different parts of the country different parts of the world they remember this ministry and they send their uh, regular uh, support and i request all of you to remember the ministry of bbi the brotheran bible institute in your prayers i have brought one a souvenir which we recently published i think i will i will keep a copy here and you can get all the information about the ministry of bbi and also the account details are there if anyone wants to or anyone uh, is led by a god to send a support for this ministry you can uh, do that and you can do that through gmi also and also i involve 
in the ministry of Atma Pragasini, a Malayalam magazine. And that is uh, one of the leading uh, magazines, a standard Malayalam magazines uh, we have in Kerala. So I am working as one of the editors of that magazine. And if anyone wants to receive, uh, you please give me the address or uh, details and we can uh, send a copy of Atma Pragasini, Malayalam a magazine to you. And also I am involving in the MAS Bible Correspondence Ministry. I am the language coordinator for Malayalam and uh, English uh, courses. You know that in America they have the main office of MAS uh, Correspondence School. And from there they are supporting us for printing the books in uh, Indian languages. I think in India we have 14 uh, different language uh, courses are there. Uh, covering almost all the areas of India and we are start uh, translating the courses in different other languages and many uh, people, the evangelists and elders and other brethren are involving in the ministry of MAS Bible Correspondence Course and recently, I think three or four years before the, the central main office here in Iowa, they communicated us that we are not able to send the support for printing the books. We are going to reduce the, the support we are uh, giving you. And after a few years, maybe after three or four years, they are going to completely stop the support uh, you know, in supporting the Ministry of MAS in India. And they say that you have so many the brethren assemblies in India in, and especially so many assemblies in Kerala and so many of your people are in Gulf and America and they can uh, support the ministry that is going on in India. So we uh, need your help, the help of the brethren who are here in America uh, to continue the ministry uh, we have in India. So we have a board there in India, R.P. Samuel from New Delhi, he is the chairman and one K.C. Jacob from Mekadur, he is settled now in um, Bangalore, he is the national coordinator. One Sheshan Abraham uh, from Bhopal, uh, he is the general secretary. So we have about 11 or 12 uh, members in the trust. And we have the state coordinators for almost all the uh, states. And in Kerala, we have the work in almost all the districts of Kerala. So please remember, this ministry, so many people, they enroll in the MAS course, especially you know, we print the address of the MAS course in all the tracks we uh, print in Kerala and in other uh, parts of India. So, so many inquiries we get. So we are in need of producing more uh, MAS correspondence courses. So we need uh, your support for this ministry and also I am involving in a news email news ministry called MAS uh, sorry the Adelphoi news I think some of you are uh, getting that uh, email news if anyone wants to get that please send a mail to Adelphoi news at gmail.com uh, I'll be glad to send you the email news so please remember me and the ministry I am doing uh, for the Lord uh, in Kerala. And also I involve in the teaching, preaching ministry uh, in different parts of uh, India. So please uh, remember me, my family, my assembly and the activities uh, we are doing for the Lord. And I am glad that uh, I am here with all of you as uh, your brother stated a few years before in Calicut, in one of the, the evangelist and elders meeting conducted in Malabar area. Uh, we were there together uh, ministering the word of God and, and God has brought me here with you. Uh, in the New Testament, you know, we have four gospels. And we know that the first three Gospels are called the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke. And we have the fourth Gospel, the Gospel according to uh, John. And if you just analyze the first three Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, we find that many things that are recorded 
or that are written in the synoptic gospels we do not find in the fourth gospel for example the genealogy of our lord jesus christ the birth the baptism the temptation even the ascension so this uh, the facts about the lord jesus christ which we find in the first three gospels we do not see in the fourth gospel the same way the many things are unique to the fourth gospel many things we find in the john's gospel we do not find in the first three gospels for example our lord jesus christ you know he dealt with the samaritan woman even the the claims of the lord jesus christ the famous claims we have in the john's gospel the raising of lazarus so like that so many the the details about the ministry of our lord jesus christ we do not find in the synoptic gospels so this evening i would like to draw your attention to a unique passage that we find only in john's gospel john's gospel chapter 19 Uh, verses 25 and 26 gospel according to john chapter 19 25 and 26 now there stood by the cross of jesus his mother and his mother's sister mary the wife of cleophas and mary magdalene When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved he said unto his mother woman behold thy son then said he to the disciple behold thy mother and from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home Now many times you know when we when we meditate the word of God during the time of worship so we make the statement that when jesus was hanging on the cross he was alone all other people they left the lord jesus christ and he was alone when he was standing when he was hanging on the cross but here we see when jesus was hanging on the cross he was not alone certain people they came near the cross of jesus christ and they are with the lord jesus near the cross it was easy for anyone to be with the lord jesus christ when he was you know teaching the lessons in parables see when jesus was moving around in the society the hundreds of people the thousands of people you know they followed the lord jesus christ so it it was an easy thing to be with the lord jesus when he cast out the demons or when he performed the miracles but it is a difficult thing to identify with the lord jesus christ you know when he was hanging on the cross So Jesus Christ so he was sentenced for crucifixion and the the Jewish religious authorities you know they declared that he was a blasphemer even the roman authority they have given him the capital punishment so coming near to such a person be with such a person and identifying you know with him is a difficult thing yet we find this you know five people mentioned here they came near the lord jesus christ and they silently they proclaimed to the world that we are with jesus or we are related to the lord jesus christ so they were not able to just you know release him from the cross the soldiers are there 
the religious authorities are there so these you know five people they are not in a situation to give a freedom or a release to the lord jesus christ but we find that they did what they can do in that difficult situation when jesus was hanging on the cross these people came near the cross of jesus and they are with him just let me examine the persons who are nearby the cross verse 25 there stood by the cross of jesus his mother the first person we find here near the cross is the mother of jesus christ mary the mother of jesus christ even if no other people no other persons no come near to the lord jesus christ no we know uh, sh she cannot keep her away because her firstborn son is hanging on the cross so whatever may be the situation so as a mother she cannot you know be far off so she came and stood near the cross of our lord jesus christ and another thing she came with a burden heart according to the jewish culture the the first son the eldest son has the responsibility to take care of the parents and if you just go through the commentaries many of the commentators they are of the opinion that at the time of the death of christ joseph was not alive so for mary you know her firstborn son jesus who was supposed to take care of her in her you know old age is about to die so with a burden heart you know she uh, came near the cross of our lord jesus christ though we read that she has you know other children this uh, he who supposed to take care of you know her so with that you know burden with that you know uh, difficulty she had in the mind she came near the cross of our lord jesus christ and you know i want to say that when she came near the cross with a burden heart it was understood by the lord jesus christ the need of her was understood well by the lord jesus christ we know he though he was hanging on the cross our lord jesus christ the is the omniscient god who knows everything and our lord jesus christ he really understood the need of his mother and that is why in the next verse we read and when jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved he said unto his mother a woman behold thy son so her son is about to die and her immediate situation was known by the lord jesus christ and here he we, we find that to her Jesus Christ is giving a son woman behold thy son See when we live in this world as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ many times you now we have troubles in our lives We face so many problems in our you know day to day Christian life Now we have problems related to our family life we have problems from the the employment the the people with whom we associate 
We face so many social problems, the financial crisis. Sometimes, you know, people, they accuse us, they mock us. And when we go through such difficult situation, you know, what we have to do is we, we should not be far from the Lord. We have to come near the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we come to him, you know, he is there to, to help us in our difficult situation. In 1 Peter we read, Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So our Lord, our omniscient God, he knows the difficult situations in which we are, and he wants us to, to come near to him. See, we have to be near to him with our needs. As you know, Mary came near the cross with a burdened heart, we have to be near the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Definitely, he is going to supply all our needs in accordance with the riches in glory in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, she came near the cross with a burdened heart and you know, her need was met. And she got a son to care for her, uh, for her remaining life. Then we find the next person, verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister. We do not find the name of Jesus' mother's sister here. But if you read all the parallel passages we have in other Gospels, now we can easily identify the sister's name, Mary's sister's name. Now she is Salome, or the wife of Sabadi, or we can say the mother of Apostle John and James. So when Jesus was hanging on the cross, we find the second uh, woman coming near the cross, Salome. Now when we read Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, <clears throat> verse 20, we read like this, Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 20, verse 20. There we read, Then came to him the mother of Sabadi's children with her sons, Worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. So during the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, this Salome, the wife of Sabadi, or the mother of John and James, you now they came, she came to the Lord Jesus Christ with a request. And her request was, when you establish your kingdom, so on your left and right you give the prominent positions to my Two sons, John and James. We know that in the first century, the Jewish people, they were eagerly waiting for the coming of Messiah. They were under the Roman authority. So they have an idea that the virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. The Messiah is going to come. He is going to, to release them from the, the bondage of Roman authority. And in such situation, we see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So most of the disciples, when they followed the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, they had that idea. He is going to redeem them from the political slavery. And within that context, we have to see 
the request of the wife of Sabadi or Salome. So she was praying, requesting our Lord Jesus Christ that when you establish your kingdom, you know, my two children, my two sons, they should get prominent uh, position in your uh, government or in your rule. And we find that publicly, you know, she was scolded by our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet we see that in this difficult situation, she came near the cross and, you know, identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we were in that situation, what we would think? So we have requested something to a person. He did not give that and publicly he rebuked us. And when such a person is going through this kind of difficulty, do we, do, do we go and identify with him? Then normally we say that, you know, this should definitely happen to him. Let him suffer. Now he is that kind of person. He was the one who scolded me publicly. Let him bear this. But she, you know, Salome, she did not think that way. And we find that she came with Mary, the mother of Jesus and other uh, people, and, and stood near the cross. So that uh, reveals the fact that you know, she came near the cross with a repentant heart. Mary came with a burdened heart, and we find that her need was met and here we find the second person, uh, Salome, the, the wife of Sabadi came with a repented heart. So she understood that, you know, I, I asked a wrong thing to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why he is called at me. So because she recognized that, you know, we find the presence of her near the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now many times, you know, we... Uh, you know, pray to the Lord so many things. So we, when we pray, you know, we have so many requests to place before the Lord. And many times we say, the comment from the people, I pray to the Lord, but he did not answer. And all prayers are having the answers. Sometimes the answer may be, yes. Our God may graciously provide what all the things we pray in his presence. We know, we experience that kind of, you know, response from the Lord in our prayers. And sometimes, you know, when we pray, God say no. And many people, when they get that answer no, they say that, you know, God did not you know, listen to my prayer. We cannot say that, you know, that is... Another answer we received for our prayers. So our Heavenly Father, He knows what is necessary for us. So when we pray, if it is in accordance with His will, if it is in accordance with His plan, you know, He may provide us. Sometimes He may say, no. And that is the answer we get from the Lord. And sometimes, you know, He is there, you wait. And in, you know, I saw so many people, they stop coming to the assembly. They don't come for the Bible classes. They don't come for the prayer meeting. And many times when we inquire, you know, we say, you know, why should I come to the assembly? You know, I have so many needs. You know, the Lord is not listening to my prayers. I go through so many difficult situations. Nobody is there to care for me. And you now they go back, you know, in their uh, spiritual life. Go away from the assembly activities. And let us examine ourselves. Do we have that kind of experience? How often we spend time in the presence of the Lord in prayers? Do we have the family uh, prayer at home? So sometime back in Kerala, 
maybe during my childhood days i remember at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock from every christian house you know we we hear the sound of christian songs and prayers the bible reading and evening at 7 o'clock we hear such in you know, a sound from the christian houses not only from the 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 brethren or pentecostal houses even from the denominational houses we hear that in the past but nowadays there is no family prayers still let me say that from the hindu house evening at 6 o'clock you know they they have that nelavalaka they have that there in a rama prayer even in this 21st century you know they continue that system but in the believers house if you go to the christian house in many houses let me say that they don't have morning family prayers evening family prayers especially in kerala and many people they are in front of the tvs with the you know remote in their hands no just searching the programs and seeing different programs at a time different serials at a time and sometime back you know we, when we had the power shedding the lord shedding you know they used to have a small brief prayer within that half an hour they want to have a small family prayer they sing a small song jeevan de uravadam kristu athre there is a uh, the small the shortest psalm psalm 117 then a person who prays less at home you know is asked to pray then they have the supper or food within that you know half an hour and again they are in front of the tv in the main room so people you know they they don't have time for the spiritual activities they go back in their spiritual you know activities go away and here you know we find salome so when she had you know that kind of experience from the lord but still we find her near the cross of our lord jesus christ so she understood the mistake she committed and now she repented from that and she is near the cross of our lord jesus christ let it, let us examine ourselves so in our past life if we if we have that kind of experience we requested something in the presence of the lord in prayer god said no or wait still that waiting period is continuing are you associating yourselves with the lord do you continue in your prayer do you regularly come to the cross of our lord jesus christ if not let us repent uh, from our sins and be right with the lord and draw near to the cross of our lord jesus christ thirdly we find in verse 25 Mary the wife of Cleophas and when i you know studied this passage when i meditated this passage i tried to find you know more things about mary but i did not find anything else in the scriptures we we read so many things about mary the mother of jesus we read about you know mother sister we find about john we find about mary magdalene but we don't see many things about you know mary the wife of cleophas then why you know what made her to come to the cross of our lord jesus christ i think it was because of her love to the lord jesus christ Now because she was loving the Lord Jesus Christ because of the greatness of the love she had to the Lord Jesus Christ you know she came near to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ we know that we 
the believers we experience the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. We experience, we have received the love of God the Father. In John's Gospel we read, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. In 1 John chapter 3 we read, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. And if you read John's epistle, we find that love God the Father demonstrated to us through the crucifixion and the death of his son on the cross. And he says, behold, what you know, manner of love, what kind of love by which God loved each one of us. The greatness of the love of God, you know, was understood by each one of us. That is why we are here in this assembly. See, when we were nothing in the presence of the Lord, when we were going away from the presence of the Lord, when we were his enemies, when we were totally incapable of doing anything to merit salvation, God the Father loved us. God the Son, he loved us and he gave himself for us. And we experienced, we really understood the greatness of love of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. And we find the same thing with Mary, the wife of Cleophas. And because of the greatness of the love she experienced from the Lord, she came and identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we experienced that. We understood that. The Holy Spirit helped us to recognize that love of God, love of Christ. That is why you know, we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and we are here in the assembly. Now so many years have gone. What about our love to the Lord today? Now when we come to the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 4, we see the message to the chapter at Ephesus. Nevertheless, I have some what against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Now that was the message given to the church at Ephesus. You left your first love. See, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, no, we were so loving him. So we were you know, involving in all the assembly activities. We were so eager to go out and spread the good news of our Lord. We were so proud to be known as you know, Christians or believers. But now we are believers for so many years. What about our loud towards the Lord today. Now, is it an increasing love or a decreasing love? See, as the time passes by, as the years go by, it is necessary that we should grow in that love. Our love towards the Lord should increase, you know, moment after moment, day after day. But now, what about our love? To the Lord. When Lord is talking to us. What would our Lord say? You, will, it, will he say like this? You have left your first love? Just examine ourselves. How is our zeal for the Lord today? How is our zeal for the assembly activities today? Now many people, they come to the assembly in order to please the elders of the assembly. We know the Sunday school teachers, you know, they inquire with the children, you know, why, did, why, why you didn't come last week. So in order to, you know, escape that, you know, a question, the Sunday school children, I know many people, they come to the Sunday school. 
and that may be the same situation with the elderly people also now many people they come to the assembly not because they are loving the lord because you know they know that if i come if i don't come to the assembly the elders may inquire brother or sister why you didn't come last sunday now we had a bible class we had a prayer meeting you know why you were absent now many people you know in order to please men they come for the assembly activities instead of you know loving the lord so when we are here in the presence of the lord you now let us know that our lord is an omniscient one and he knows our heart he knows our feelings he knows our goal he knows our intention with which we are here in the presence of the lord so is it out of the real love to the lord or out of something else let us you know examine ourselves and let us be like you know mary the wife of cleophas and finally we see the fourth uh, woman mary magdalene so we see mary the mother of jesus came with a burdened heart a salome came with a repented heart mary the wife of cleophas came with a loving heart and fourthly we find mary magdalene near the cross of our lord jesus christ see when we look into mark's gospel i think that is in chapter 16 verse 9 we read now when jesus was risen early the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene out of whom he had cast seven demons so this mary magdalene was a woman you know possessed by seven demons evil spirit and with that burden she was wandering around and one day we know that she met the lord jesus christ and he cast out the demons from her and we read that you know from that time onwards she was continuously following the lord jesus christ so till then you know she did not have any hope you now she had you know burden from this demons but now she is free and with a thankful heart we see she was following the lord jesus christ even when jesus was arrested when he is there now hanging on the cross you no know, nothing could stop her keep her away from the cross still you know she is thankful to the lord whatever may be happening you know i don't care i don't worry i will be with jesus i am with jesus you know that was the attitude you know we see you know in mary magdalene with a thankful heart she followed the lord jesus christ so we should be thankful we were saved we became the children of god we got new life we got peace in our lives we received sanctification we received justification our sins were forgiven and we have eternal life we have a hope our lord is preparing a place for us he is coming to take us to that heavenly home so when we remember the blessings we received now we should be thankful to the lord and with a thankful heart it is necessary that we should follow the lord jesus christ and we should be with the lord jesus christ are we thankful to the lord
See, I think most, most all, all of us are, you know, from Kerala. We know the situations in which we were in the past. We know our family background. We know the situations in which we were grown. And now God has brought us here. God has given us education. God has given us good job. God has given us good health. God has given us good life partners. The children. A good assembly. A good spiritual atmosphere. Even a comfortable stay. You know, religious freedom. I think now all the assemblies, all the believers, especially who are from the North India. You know, they are, you know, they are praying more. But here, you are in a, a situation in which you have religious freedom, you have good atmosphere. Are you, are we grateful to the Lord? Are we thankful to the Lord? We find Mary Magdalene, you know, she came near the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and she followed the Lord Jesus Christ with a thankful heart. Let us remember our past. How God led us in the past. How God was faithful to us in the past. So when we remember that, you know, always that will help us to be thankful to him in every, in every moment of our life. May God help us to do that. For a woman came near the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and we find one man. Verse 26, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom, uh, standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son, then said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. John, the apostle whom Jesus loved, he was the fifth person who stood near the cross. So we know about Peter, you know. He, we know that he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. Now who had so many claims, you know. Even if all leave, I will never leave you. Jude, he betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. Where are other disciples? They are all in you know, a far. They are very far and looking at the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in such difficult situation, we find the presence of John near the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now with a bold heart, he came near the cross of Jesus Christ. So as believers, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we all should have you know, that boldness in our heart. Later in the book of Revelation, we find you know, he, was, he was sent to island Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So when he was following the Lord Jesus Christ, he did not fear the Roman authorities. He did not fear the religious you know, leaders. Even in the midst of the severe persecution, we find that he stood for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. With a bold heart, he came and stood near the cross. See, for women, you know, they had the boldness to come near to the cross. But among the men, we find only one person. That is Apostle John. So we need to have that kind of boldness. The brothers and sisters who are here. Now we need to have that boldness in following the Lord Jesus Christ. And coming near to him. Near to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let me say he came near the cross. And he got a responsibility. He came near the cross. And he got the responsibility to take care of the mother of Jesus for the remaining days. Let me say, if we are away, you know, sometimes we may not get the responsibilities. 
So God loves the one who is coming near to him and he is going to grant them, he is going to give them responsibilities. May God help us to do that. And another thing, you know, that touched my heart when I, you know, meditated this passage is the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he was hanging on the cross, he will recognize his responsibility as a son. Now he was you know, suffering, going through pain and agony, the, the mental strain, the spiritual agony. Yet we find when he saw his mother standing nearby, he recognized his responsibility as a son. So I am going to die. I am going away. And who, who will look after my mother? So he gave that responsibility to his beloved disciple, Apostle John. So our Lord Jesus Christ is an example to each one of the children, the sons and daughters who are sitting here in the presence of the Lord. Are we faithful to our parents in taking care of them? See, our parents, they, they worked for us. They suffered for us. They gave us the education. They, they did everything for us. And that is why, you know, we are here today in this assembly hall. And your parents may be at, you know, Kerala or in India. Are you taking care of your parents? Do you call your parents and talk to them? Do you support, regularly support your parents? See, our Lord Jesus Christ is a good example for each one of us. And many times, you know, we find that after the marriage, the son or daughter, you know, they just, you know, forget their responsibility towards their parents. So he is our model. He is our example. So if we take care of our parents, let me say that we are going to receive the same kind of treatment from our children. So I heard a story like this. A husband and wife and uh, their children and that husband's father. One day the wife called the husband and said, take your father to the upper house. They are two houses. But old house is there in the upper side. So she said, my parents are coming, you take your father to the upper house. So the husband, poor man, he took a you know, chair and kept his father and he was just carrying the father to the upper house. So it is a hilly place and he was just carrying and in the middle, he saw a rock and he kept the chair and suddenly the father started crying. And the son said, don't cry, Papa. Uh, very soon I will bring you down. And the father said, son, I am not crying for that. By hearing your mother's uh, you know, words, I did the same to my father and I kept him here. Okay, he tried to, you know, comfort the father. Then again, the father tried to, you know, cry. Then again, son tried to comfort him and father said, now I am coming, crying, thinking, you know, about you. You know, one day you are going to get the same, same situation. So in Kerala, you know, we have a statement, kodutal kollatum kittum. Kodutal kollatum so when we deal with our parents, when we talk with our parents, when we care for our parents, you know, our children are there always watching what we are doing, how we are dealing with our parents. So if you don't treat nicely, then we get the same kind of treatment from our children. So when you get when you are old and if you want to get a good treatment from your children, please remember the example of our Lord Jesus Christ who cared for 
his mother. So let us be like Mary. Come to the cross with a burdened heart. Let us be like Salome. Come near the cross with a repented heart. Let us be with, uh, let us be like, you know, Mary, the wife of Cleopas. Let us have that, you know, loving heart. And let us be like, you know, Mary Magdalene. You know, let us have that kind of thankful heart. And like John, let us have a bold heart and follow the Lord Jesus Christ and be near to him. May God help us to, to take the example of our Lord Jesus Christ who loved his mother and cared for his mother. May God's name be glorified. Brethren Media, a ministry of international brethren.